Hello, you are all welcome to this channel. In this course, we are going to learn about computer networking from beginner to advanced level. Kindly subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so in order not to miss a bit of these lessons. In this series, we are going to learn about the core devices that are needed in networking. Today, I will talk about network switches. To begin, let's see what a computer networking actually means. Computer networking means interconnecting computers or computing devices to communicate, exchange data and share resources with each other. These network devices use a system of rules called communications protocols to transmit information over wired or wireless medium. Now, what are network devices? These are devices that forms part of a computer network. 1. Ethernet switch now, let's see in details what an Ethernet switch is. Ethernet switch connects other devices such as computers, printers, wireless access points in a network to each other, and allows them to communicate by exchanging data packets. Do not worry if you are not yet familiar with certain terminologies like packet, I will explain further in the subsequent videos. Just follow throughout this course. Let now see how these switches work. Switches can be hardware devices that manage physical networks, as well as software-based virtual devices. Switches provide the wired connections to desktop computers, wireless access points, industrial machinery, and some Internet of Things devices. A network switch operates on the network layer 2 of the OSI model. Don't worry, we will know what an OSI model is in later videos. In a local area network using Ethernet, a network switch determines where to send each incoming packet by looking at the physical device address or MAC address and mapping each packet to its intended destination. Let's now see the ways we can use in a network switch. 1. We can use a switch as an edge or access switch. These switches manage traffic either coming into or exiting the network. Devices like computers and access points connect to edge switches. 2. We can also use a switch as aggregation or distribution switch. These switches are placed within an optional middle layer. Edge switches connect into these and they can send traffic from switch to switch or send it up to core switches. 3. We can again use a switch as a core switch. These switches form the backbone of the network. Core switches connect either aggregation or edge switches, user or device edge networks to data center networks and enterprise LANs to routers. As we now know what a network switch is and how they function, let quickly look at the types of switches we have. 1. Managed switches. Managed switches are types of switches that have software interfaces to customize settings and features such as security levels, precision control, and full management of the network. These are used in organizations containing a large network and can be customized to enhance the functionality of a network. Another type of switch we can have is 2. Unmanaged switch. These are called plug-and-play switches as they are plug-in and instantly start working. They are mostly used for home networks and small businesses. Such switches do not need to be monitored or configured. 3. Smart Ethernet Switches These switches offer basic management features with the ability to create some levels of security but have a simpler management interface than the other managed switches. They are often called partially managed switches. 4. Another type of switch is a PoE switch. PoE stands for Power over Ethernet. It is a technology that integrates data and power on the same cable allowing power devices to receive parallel data and power signals at the same time. These switches are mainly used in CCTV IP camera installations. 5. Another important switch is the KVM switch. KVM means keyboard, video, mouse. 
This device allows you to use multiple PCs, servers with a single keyboard, monitor, and mouse. Imagine having to manage about three or four PCs, or servers from one desk. You cannot put four monitors, four keyboards, and four mice on your desk and connect each of them to a respective machine. In this case, CAVM allows you to connect the PCs to the switch, and the switch is connected to the single keyboard, monitor, and mouse. Now, let's see some different forms of CAVM switches. CAVM switches comes in different forms with varieties of ports or connectors such as Ethernet port, VGA ports, DVI ports among others. Now, one may ask how do I select the appropriate switch for my network? Here are some factors you have to consider when purchasing a network switch. 1. Consider the switch speed. Also know as the throughputs of the switch. This refers to the rate at which the switch can transmit data in megabits per second. For example, a switch can have a speed of 10 100 Mbps. This means that the switch can transmit data at a speed of 10 megabits per second and 100 megabits per second. These switches are known for the term 10 based T or or fast Ethernet switches. They are okay for a small size home office network. A switch can also have speed of 10 slash 100 slash 1000 Mbps. This means that the switch can transmit data at a speed up to 1000 megabits per second, which is equal to 1 gigabits per second. They are known by the term gigabit ethernet switches. These switches are okay for a medium size home office network. A switch can also have a speed of 10 slash 100 slash 1000 slash 10,000 Mbps. This means that the switch can transmit data at a speed up to 10 billion bits per second, which is equal to 10 gigabits per second. Yes, you heard me right. This is suitable for a very large high speed network. In a nutshell, the switch speed you choose depends on the type of throughput you need. If, for example, you need to move large data files on a regular basis, you should consider a gigabit ethernet switch. Two, another factor you need to consider when choosing a switch is the number of ports. The number of ports available in a switch can vary. Consider the size of your network the more computers you have, the more ports you will need. Three, consider also if the switch is stackable or standalone. As your business and your network grows, you will likely need to support more and more devices, which will mean investing in more switches. A standalone switch is managed and configured as an individual entity with limited capacity. If there is a problem, troubleshooting is also switch specific. A stackable switches can be connected together to increase the capacity and availability of your network. Instead of configuring, managing, and troubleshooting each switch, you can treat the stack as a single unit. This means that if any part of the stack fails, the stack will root around the failure, so your network keeps running. I hope you have understood what a network switch is. In the next video, I will talk about routers, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel for more interesting tutorials.